My intellect is without limit. Stacks back, school phase MTG. Welcome back to another edition of What the Stacks Think. This is going to be a different, different, different type of video. Uh, I'm going to split this video up into two sections. In the first half, I'm going to talk about one thing. In the second half, I'm going to talk about another thing. Um, the topic I'm going to talk about in the second half of the video, I actually had no intentions of talking about it at first until so many people emailed me and messaged me and asked me what do I think about it, uh, asked me if I was going to speak on it on my channel, and uh, it made me feel inclined to discuss it, so I'm actually I'm going to discuss it here in this video. Um, the response to this topic or the questions I got in response to the second topic in this video it, it was it's been very overwhelming um especially considering that i'm a smaller channel so um if i'm getting the response that i'm getting and the people questioning emailing me as a smaller channel i can only imagine how it's been for some larger channels so i am going to talk about it bearing that in mind this is one of the few opportunities that i get to take advantage of being a smaller channel i'm not a wpn member i'm not a sponsored channel at the time of recording this, I only have roughly 840 subscribers. So for all intents and purposes, Wizards of the Coast and YouTube don't even know who I am. They don't even know I exist. So therefore, I get to speak freely without fear of losing anything, because I don't have anything to lose. So with that, I want everybody to know this is not a video to bash Wizards. This is just me offering my honest, solid, stable-minded opinion on two very important topics that are affecting our game today. So the first of these topics I'm going to talk about is bannings. In case you don't know, Agent of Treachery and Fires of Invention caught the ban hammer at the beginning of the month along with the companions mechanic it got nerfed. Um, I think we all can agree that Agent of Treachery it deserved to be banned. Um, it was warping the standard format. It was causing decks to have to put cards into it just to respond to it. So any card that makes the whole format warp to have to deal with it one specific card um that card is too powerful um it's taking up a large percentage of the meta like it was um especially on online gameplay on arena um the card needs to go so i think it's a unanimous agreement when it comes to agent and treasury that it should have been banned and it was banned appropriately and i think for the most part everybody's happy that it's gone or most people are happy that it's gone anyway but when it pertains to fires convention i have a problem with fires being banned uh because wilderness reclamation was not banned and the reasoning for banning fires convention that wizards gave in their article when the banning was put out was that fires convention it creates design restraint and the whole ability of it giving you free casting, basically free mana, um, was a problem. So they banned it, which, okay, that's fair. But if you're going to ban Fire's Invention, then why not ban Wilderness Reclamation? Because it basically, for all intents and purposes, does the same thing. It just, the functionality of it, yeah, it, it's a little different because um, you have to utilize it differently than you did Fire's. But basically, it does the same thing. So if you're going to ban one card that gives free casting or free mana, then why not ban the other one? That's basically the same design, same mana cost, same card type, and functionally does the same thing. Um, I don't understand that one. As far as all of the bans and standard as a whole that have been happening over the past few years, it creates a larger issue to me because all of these bannings that have been happening over the past few years, it begs the question what's going on with the design team, what's going on with the game testing team over at Wizards of the Coast. Um, and it creates a feeling of every time a new card is spoiled or a new card comes out, me as the consumer, do I have to worry about is this card too good? Is this card going to be banned? Um, am I going to spend my money on this card and buy this card to play with it, but then a month or a few weeks down the road, it will be banned and now I just wasted my money. So if that has to be the continuous concern moving forward, then it's going to give the consumer base a feeling of unease. People are going to be worried. Man, when they see a card spoiled, that card is too powerful. Oh man, that card is probably going to be banned. Uh, people are going to cry about it. It's going to get banned. You know, everybody's going to be in the ban, ban, ban frenzy. And that's not a good environment to have cultivate um, in a trading card game environment. Um, if I cannot confidently spend my money on cards and have full intentions of being able to play with them and full ability to be able to play with them, then it, it's going to create an issue. So I think Wizards of the Coast might need to start being a little bit more mindful of the, the cards they're designing, the cards they're putting out, the cards they're allowing the community to have access to. 
Um, if you look at the companions, they changed the companion mechanic, which is basically they, they just gave it an errata. Um, if you don't know what an errata is, it's basically when Wizards of the Coast, they changed the functionality of a, of a particular card or a particular mechanic um, by not changing the printing on the card, but they basically um, put it out you know, on the internet to the masses and say, hey, this is the official wording of, of this card or this mechanic, we're changing it to this, even though it's typed on the actual card, it says one thing, we're actually changing it to where it says this and it functions this way. That's fine, they usually do that and apply that to older cards when newer cards come out and they affect the way that the older cards function or they make the older cards more busted or broken, then they will usually go back and errata the older cards so that they aren't as busted and broken because of what the new cards are bringing into the game. Um, that's typical, that's been happening in Magic for basically forever, but it's very bothersome to me that this is happening with newer cards that just came out the companions are in standard right now they are brand new fresh ideas fresh designs and for them to come out um, and have the functionality being one way and then literally weeks later after they come out which is have has to errata the way that they function that creates a huge uncertainty and and just a very bad taste in the consumer bases feelings toward the game of magic and the way the the cards that wizards putting out to us to play with if you, if you put out a card and it you tell me it functions a certain way or I, that I have the ability to play it a certain way, I have confidence that moving forward that I will be able to play that card that way or that I, that card is going to function that the way that you're telling me it functions for the foreseeable future, at least in the near, in the near term while it's in the standard environment. Um, if weeks later you have to errata that card or errata that functionality of that card and change the way that it's played after many, many people have fallen in love with a particular card, they run out, they spend money, they went out, they bought that card, they built decks around that card, and then weeks later you come back and change the way that card functions, which is it just basically kills the deck or you know kills the functionality of the card. Um that's gonna create some unease in your consumer base. So because then it's gonna start feeling like Wizards is just designing broken cards and putting broken cards in sets just to push the product. Once people just go out and spend their money, buy up the product and they meet sales quotas then they just figured they can just ban whatever it is that drew, that drove the sales of the product. I think that there may be something going on with Wizards design team or Wizards play design, play testing, um, where they may not be all on the same page. So I don't work for Wizards. I'm not sponsored by Wizards. I don't know anything about the internal workings of Wizards. This is just me speculating on the outside um, from a corporate environment standpoint. Um, it looks like there's something going on over there um, that they may need to get under control because if they continually put out cards, um, powerful cards that attract people to spend their money on them um, and then they have to turn around and just ban them, then it's going to give a perception that, hey, every time Wizards puts out something powerful that does something cool, you might as well not spend your money on it because it's going to end up getting banned. Um, play design and game design, they have to have the the foresight to be able to say, to be able to look at their designs and test these cards and be able to say whether or not, hey, this card is too powerful to introduce to the community or we might need to change this up a little bit um, so that it doesn't create a problem. Um, trust me guys, they can see the problems before they happen, um, before they put these cards out. If you look at Oko, the explanation that was given about banning Oko and the um, play design uh, boss, if you will, saying that they had never tested Oko in a defensive manner, a, meaning they had never tested him as using his ability to turn your opponent's creatures into 3-3 um, Elks. They said they never tested that. They, they only tested Oko in an offensive way. Well, at that point, when that was said, something should have been done about the employee that said that because as play design, as testers of the game that you are designing, the game that you're putting out, you need to test that card in all aspects, not just one aspect. You can't just put out a spell and just test it as, oh, well, we intended to only function this way, so we're only going to test it as functioning this way. No, you have to put yourself in the mindset of an actual magic player. Because magic players, you give us tools, we're going to do the most degenerate broken thing we can do with them and you as play design and game design have to know that so for that employee to say that they only tested oko in one aspect which was offensive and not defensive 
employees. That was a bad thing to say. And I think that something should have been done about that employee saying that. And I don't know, maybe something did, maybe something different didn't, I don't know. Um, again, I don't work for Wizards. I'm not on the internal workings of Wizards, so I don't know, maybe something was done. But if nothing was done, something definitely should be done. Because if that's the explanation that we get for a car that so many people went out and spent money on to play with, that should be currently available to us in standard. If that is the explanation that we have to deal with, if that we have to accept, then that doesn't look good. That's not a good look on Wizards at all. So I think Wizards needs to be more mindful of the cars they're designing, the cars they're play testing, the cars they're putting out to the community because you're gonna start creating a consumer unease to the people that you're selling cars to. If we cannot confidently buy cars with the intention of playing them without fear of them being banned, then that's gonna be an issue. That's a huge issue. And I don't think Wizards wants to cultivate that type of environment um, in their community, in their in their consumer base. I mean, if you just look over the past few things that have been released, so many things have been banned. I mean, from Modern Horizons, you got Hogak being banned. Um, you got in the standard environment, you got Oko, you got Once Upon a Time being banned. You got the, the uh, One Mana Green spell that got banned. I forget his name, his name escapes me right now. Um, you, now you got Asian of Treachery, you got Fires of Invention being banned. So it's just looking like ban hammers left and right. It's starting to look like anytime anything powerful, anything cool is put out by wizards, it has the potential to be banned. And um, that's not a that's not a feeling that I think wizards wants to to, to put out to the community. Um, I don't think they want their consumer base feeling like they are questionably buying their product because I might not be able to play with this if I buy it. So um, maybe I shouldn't buy it. That's not something I think Wizards wants everybody to start feeling, but that's the direction everybody will start to go if so many bans keep happening. And now we not just have to worry about bans, we have to worry about erratas because the companions got errata. So now if Wizards puts out a card, they may not ban it. They may just change the wording of it or change the way that it functions so that it doesn't function the same. So, hey, they put a card out to you and they spoil it and the community gets in an uproar, like everybody's excited about it. Oh, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna design this deck, I'm gonna play it in this deck, you run out, spend money, buy up the cards and, and build the deck. And then weeks later, it gets errata to now the functionality is changing, you, you, it functions this way or you have to use it this way. And that is a very sinking feeling. So I don't think Wizards wants to keep portraying that or keep cultivating that feeling onto its consumer base. So I hope Wizards gets it together over there in that aspect um, of the game. I hope that they start better design and better play testing these cards before they put them out to the community. Um, and that's that's just my feeling on the whole bannings and errata type situation. But now moving into the second half of the video. In case you don't know, these seven cards right here got banned as of yesterday. Now for us to understand this, we have to back this train up to a few days ago. So there was an article that a guy put out, I can't pronounce his name, but I did link the article down below, but he was basically saying that he was talking about the Wizards that he knows and the experience that he's had with Wizards. And he's talking about all of these racist events and racist accounts and things that Wizards has done that have not been for the betterment of equality and inclusivity. If you want to reference that article, it's down below again, but I'm not going to talk about everything he covered in that article. Just to simply put it, he was talking about racism within the Wizards of the Coast work environment. Okay, so that happened. Now, as of two days ago, Mark Rosewater, he was doing a card spoiler for uh, Core 2021. And it was Fable Passage and he was playing the game Hangman on um, on his Reddit or Twitch, uh, Twitter account or something like that, I don't know. I, I don't know exactly what he was on, but he was really in the car by playing Hangman and people were trying to guess the words that were on the card. Well, I thought it was fine. I thought it was all fine and dandy. Um, I seen somebody sharing it uh, in my Facebook group. Now I was just following along and just looking as the card was re revealed. Um, I thought it was fine, but later on, that night he came out and he made a public apology on his twitter saying that his choice to play hangman was completely insensitive and it must have offended some people and he was deeply uh sympathetic for it he apologized and he said that uh racism has no place at, at wizards of the coast again i thought the hangman game was fine i didn't find it offensive but maybe there were people were, and that's not for me or anybody else to dictate how somebody else feels. So yes, Mark apologized, and then 
Right after that, Wizards of the Coast banned these seven cards. These seven cards have been around. These are old magic cards. They've been around forever. Nobody even thinks about them anymore for the most part. They have no relevance in the game pretty much, but they do exist. They are in the, the, the magic card database. And uh, so Wizards decided to pull them and ban them because they show racist intent or um, they project racist ideas or racist ideology. So I think there's one card on the list that we all can agree on that pretty much looks racist and that's Invoke Prejudice. Um, this card has been around since Legends. Um, obviously, I mean, you look at the card and it definitely is racist. Um, it was assigned a multiverse number, which is basically a, a card index number that use, Wizards uses to look up the cards in the database. Um, the number that it was assigned was uh, 1488. Um, if you don't know that particular number's significance with white supremacy and racism, um, you can research that on your own. I'm not going to get into that, but it holds a very uh, high significance when it applies to um, white supremacy and racism. So I don't know if that number was just given to the card on coincidence or um to be funny as a joke um uh, but it's definitely it definitely does not look good i will say that um is this card racist in my opinion was it designed with racist intent um very much so i i, I think that everybody can agree on that if you go to the artist's um page on the internet if you go to his personal art page it's full of white supremacist looking stuff and and racist things and slogans and it, it, it he's clearly a racist so i think we all can agree that this card is racist and should be deleted and should have no place within the the magic game um do i think that wizards is banning this card and the other six cards because they really want to show that they are not racist um and they do not have racist intent i'm kind of questionable on that because i'm going to back up here I'm going to back up and I'm going to I'm going to take off the glasses when I get into this conversation here because I want everybody to know something. All right. Magic as a game has come a long way from what it used to be. Um, I've been in this game. I've been playing this game since it came out since October 1993. And I've seen this game progress a long way. OK, um, so me discussing this particular topic um, in reference to the game, it kind of hits a spot in my heart that um, I want everybody to understand. So back when Magic first came out, I think that it was not as popular. It definitely was not as popular that, as it is right now. Um, it definitely did not have the player base that it has right now, with it, which a, is a very diverse player base. Um, back then, Magic was pretty much geared towards the white, the Caucasian male, to, to put it simply, okay? Um, I was told many times as a kid that Magic was not designed with the intent to market to my demographic um i many times as a kid asked why doesn't magic have any black characters um and I, that was the answer that i was given because magic was not a game that was designed to market to my demographic i was not my demographic was not the the target consumer um i dealt with those responses as a kid um and then i remember when teferi was when he was introduced to the lore um, back in Urza Saga, um, the, the Disruptive Student card. Um, basically, the whole lore of Teferi was put out that Teferi is, is, was a bully, he was a trickster, and um, he ended up getting trapped inside of a time bubble, which back then, I remember sitting in an LGS and there, were a bunch of, there was a bunch of older kids in there and there were some older guys and they were all sitting around playing magic and um, they were joking about Teferi. I mean, back then, Teferi and the whole Urza saga and the whole lore implications all that it was new back then so i remember them sitting there and they were talking about teferi and talking about um the, the the lore aspect of him of how he was a bully he was a trickster and he was trapped inside of a time bubble and i remember them joking saying well that's indicative of of pretty much all black kids in schools these days anyway um you know T T teferi's character he was a he was a kid he was going to the tolerian academy so um they, they kind of turned it into a joke. They said all black kids in schools are, are bullies and tricksters and they, they all grow up and end up being put in jail. And that's basically what happened to Ferry. He's trapped in a time bubble. He's doing time. He's he's in jail, you know, and I, I, I heard them talking about this and I, I didn't speak on it. I didn't I didn't get into it with anybody. I didn't acknowledge anything. I was sitting there with two of my Caucasian friends and they basically were just looking at me, telling me to ignore them and telling me that those, those guys were being idiots. But it really, it really hurt. 
to hear them say that, to, to hear them believe that all black kids in schools were were basically like the Teferi character that they that 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 the that Wizards was putting out um, to the community that we all basically were troublemakers and bullies and we would end up in jail and prison doing time basically trapped in a time bubble. Um, that hurt, but it hurts to hear to hear them say that. But it hurt even more to know that me as an African American, I went for a long time playing the game of Magic without having any representation. And for the first representation I get, this is what Wizards of the Coast at the time decided to put out um, to the community was a black character who was a bully in school and he ended up doing time in the time bubble. And a lot of people in the LGSs and stores, they, they thought it was funny. They joked about it. They laughed about it. And I felt bad every time I would hear somebody talk about that. So Wizards is a company doing that back then catering to the Caucasian male um, clientele that was the, the, the primary, it was the dominant um, client of, of, of Wizard back then. That was that was the primary buyer of, of Magic cards. It was the Caucasian male. So um, companies, they will cater to um, their, their, primary, their primary target, which, and I, I strongly believe that was Wizard's primary target back then. Um, but the Wizards of the Coast today I feel it's changed a lot. Um, I don't, again, I don't know all the inner workings of Wizards right now. I mean, I, I don't work for Wizards. I'm not a, a representative of Wizards, um, but I do feel like Wizards has changed a lot. Um, the game feels a lot more inclusive um, as the community base becomes expanded, more expanded, and you see more different demographic into in the community. Um, I feel like it, Magic as a product has become a lot more inclusive. Um, we have a lot of characters of color. We have a lot of characters of, of different um, representation, um, even from a sexual and religious standpoint. Now, you see a lot of those different characters being implemented into the product to represent to to have representation, um, better representation um, over who's playing the game now. So, I feel like. Although I don't know the inner workings of Wizards and what's really the agenda and what's really going on at Wizards, that can be that's a topic that can be debated for eons if it, if if people so choose to. Um, just from my personal standpoint and looking back at where uh, Magic as a game used to be as far as representation and where it is now, um, I feel like it has grown tremendously. I feel like it is a lot more inclusive than it used to be and. I give Wizards kudos for that. Um, as far as these seven cards being banned, um, I think it was more of a knee-jerk reaction um, because of the article that was put out by um, a, a former associate of Wizards saying that he's witnessed a lot of racist dealings um, in the internal workings of Wizards. Um, I think with the whole Black Lives Matter movement right now, um, Wizards wants to be on board with that. And, and so this banning and the article being put out is a knee-jerk reaction to that. Um, that article had put Wizards in the negative seat of the Black Lives Matter movement um, that's going on right now. And I don't think Wizards wants to be in the negative seat. They don't want to be portrayed in that light as a being a racist company with racist intent. So these bannings were a knee-jerk reaction. This was a corporate reaction. Um, Mark Rosewater coming back after the the game of hangman um using that to reveal the the, the fable passage um for 2021 him coming back and apologizing for that that was a knee-jerk reaction um that was somebody at the corporate level um getting in an uproar over events that are going on and, and trying to basically save face so that wizards does not get painted in that negative light of being a racist company i think they want to be seen as as inclusive um, as inclusive as they can be and so the banning of these cards is a, is a knee-jerk reaction for that um, if the internal workings of Wizards has changed from what it used to be in the past from the non-inclusivity um, only time will tell um, as we progress into many more sets and many more product um, many more dealings with Wizards um, time will tell so um, that's my input on that that's where I stand on that um, do I think these seven cards should have been banned? Yeah, I, I think if they have any kind of racial implications, then they, they should be banned. They should be removed from the game. 
But I think people also need to realize that things need to be taken with a grain of salt, right? Like, don't get so overly um, saturated into something and over-dramatize something that doesn't need to be over-dramatized. Sure, invoke prejudice, it should be banned. It, I think we all agree on that. Um, but some of the other ones that were banned, I think, were just thrown in just as to be over-excessive for Wizards to say, hey, look at what we're doing. These cards are racist. We're getting them out of here. Bye. We don't want any of this in our in our our company and in, in our community. Will other things be banned? I don't know. We'll have to wait and see. Um, I think the article said that there will be many more to come, so we have to wait and see what they decide or what they deem is racist, and uh, we'll find out. We'll go from there. But I do want to go on the record to say this: regardless of what the internal workings or the internal culture of Wizards of the Coast has been, I think us as a Magic community, we drive the inclusivity of the game, right? I mean, I feel I feel a certain responsibility to say this as a African-American Magic the Gathering content creator. Um, there's not very many of us. So I feel very inclined to express this on the highest level that inclusivity within our community, it starts with us. Um, we can't control the internal workings of, of wizards and, and the internal culture of wizards, but we can drive the community um, as the player base. And I think that is all of our responsibility. Um, racism, it only lasts when people engage in it. And I think if we as a community don't engage in it, then it won't have a place um, within our community. So that's my spiel on it. Uh, thanks, you guys, for listening to me. Uh, this is a, a very touchy topic, as racial topics always are. Um, I, I appreciate everybody for listening to my opinion. And, and any feedback is welcome. And, and please um, leave comments down below. Um, let me know what you think of this topic. What are your feelings on this? Do you feel like these seven ban these seven cards should be banned? Do you feel like it was just a reaction from Wizards just to save face or uh, just a publicity stunt? Let me know what you think. And let me know what you think about the overall direction of bannings in general um, when it pertains to our game. Do you feel comfortable with the amount of bannings that have been happening over recent time? Um, do you feel confident in buying Wizards product moving forward? Um, that you'll be able, you feel confident that you'll be able to play with them and experience the cards to their full degree and full design um, intent um, without worry of them being banned? Or do you feel that every time you buy something, it's going to be banned? Let me know down in the, com in the comments below um, what you think, and uh, I'll see you guys next time.